Hi there folks, welcome back to the Abby and Andy Fishing Channel. I hope you're doing really well. We have got something a little bit different today on our little corner of YouTube. So if you're new to the channel, if you've been drawn in and you haven't watched this channel before, don't forget before you watch any more, do hit that subscribe button right now. That way you'll be kept in touch with all the videos we've got coming up that might be a little bit like this that you guys might enjoy. Uh, for those of you who are already subbed, thank you very much for joining us again. Uh, we had a bit of a milestone recently. We went over 20,000 subscribers. I mean, that is absolutely incredible. Uh, we talked about doing a live or something pretty soon. Uh, to talk about that, to talk about the plans and to more properly thank all of you guys who have subbed for doing exactly that. And we will keep you informed with that as and when it's coming. This all started maybe two years ago when just on a whim one day I had a brief idea that at some point I might want to go out and do some trotting on the rivers. So I bought this centre pin reel here, which for the last two years has quite literally been part of the furniture in the background of our YouTube channel. Now we're very, very lucky here in that living in Derbyshire, we're very, very close to the Derbyshire Derwent. More specifically, the Haddon Estate stretch of the Derbyshire Derwent, which while we can't bait fish it during the summer, while we can't trot it during the trout season, uh, after the trout season closes, and the first day for that is October the 8th, we can then go out and bait fish it. And over the last few years, I've actually guided quite a few people by accident, I will say, but by accident, to catch barbel on flies. And actually other members of the club have also caught barbel on fly fishing kit. I've recorded barbel uh, moving around there in shoals and groups and stuff like that while they've been out of season and thought, geez, there must be a lot of these barbel here. I really ought to go out and target these things. And just in the last few months, it started to build more and more momentum in my head. I started to get more and more drawn to this idea that actually I would like to go out and catch a Derwent barbel. Now, I have caught barbel before on bait. I've caught them ledgering. I've caught them on feeders. I've caught them rolling meat. I've actually caught a very small one on the fly as well. But I've never actually caught or even tried to catch a barbel on float fishing kit. And this, as I say, this idea sort of seeded in my head and grew roots and eventually branched out and got to the point where I was like, I've got to do this. I've got to go out and try and catch these barbel on float fishing kit. I'm desperate to do it. As soon as I can fish for these guys on bait, I've got to go and try this. So this autumn, I've finally committed to going out, buying some kit, doing some research, looking into the tactics and techniques to go and fish a centre pin and float fishing kit to go and try and catch barbel. Now, obviously, first stop here is a call into my local tackle shop because I don't own any kit to do this with. I'll say it again. I have never done this before. So I called into my local tackle shop, talked through the options, rods and stuff like that. And I ended up walking out with a brand new 13 foot free spirit power tamer, a specialist float rod, specifically designed for catching barbel and big chub on rivers, stuff like that. 13 foot rather than a 15 foot foot, I was advised because the Derwent's not a massive river at that point. Really nice piece of kit, along with a load of other bits and pieces that I was going to need to try and catch these barbel. I really wanted to keep this simple because I knew if I made this too complicated, I probably wasn't going to be able to execute it. I haven't kitted myself out to do something new for so long now. It was really, really fun. I'd forgotten what that felt like, sort of the excitement of buying the kit and the anticipation and all the research. Really, really fun. Totally out of my comfort zone. So I didn't really know where to start, but I had this idea in my head that having gone out and picked up a centre pin and wanting to do it on the trotting stuff, I just had this kind of aesthetic idea of doing it with uh, hemp seed and luncheon meat. So rather than go down the route of pellets and ground baits and boilers and stuff like that, I decided actually again to keep it really simple. The old school stuff, hemp and meat, these fish aren't particularly pressured. They don't really get fished for, so I figured the old stuff would still work. I know there would be easier ways of catching these barbel. I could probably ledger for them or fish a feeder for them or something like that. Or maybe even rolling meat might be a little bit easier. But this is the one that I really wanted. So that was me. A new rod reel and line, a new landing net and head, a bag full of bits and pieces, a little hip bag to keep my luncheon meat in my hemp pin. And that was basically it. I was away and ready to go. There was one other bit of kit that I had to learn how to use though. And that was a bait dropper, something that I'd never even tied on before, let alone chucked in a river. Not quite as easy as it looks, it turns out. So I've loaded the bait dropper up. Everything seems fine. I did a little bit of casting practice in the back garden yesterday, but it wasn't pretty. So all I need to do is just underarm this out. I'm not nervous, I promise. Underarm this out. That should hit the bottom. Bait dropper releases all the bait and that should be one done. Okay, so it didn't release it until I wound it back up and I can currently see all of that meat floating downstream. Right, the first one's gone wrong. <laughs> okay, I didn't think I did a whole lot wrong there, but oh well. Bit of hemp in there first. 
four or five bits of meat. I've got sort of a mixture of meat. It turns out luncheon meat is quite a rare thing these days. I thought I was just going to go out and buy the old traditional plum rose stuff. And that's quite hard to find. So I'm in a mixture of uh, spam, some bacon grill stuff. I didn't really understand what that was, but it sounded barbly. And some dynamite robin red luncheon meat that feels a lot tougher than the other stuff. A little bit of a mixture going on. I'll probably fish the robin red stuff on the hook just because it feels so much tougher. I'm trying to be as slow and as sort of methodical and as patient as possible with this. Line off the centre pin, I think that's okay, and I don't really know why the first one didn't go right. Get that in that bubble line, that's where I think the fish are going to be. Perhaps give it a couple of taps, lift that up, uh, and the bait dropper hasn't opened. <laughs> right, let's try this again. I'm doing something wrong here, clearly, because that should just hit the bottom, and that door should open straight up. I did Google uh, this bait dropper after I bought it and the vast majority of people on the internet seem to think that it was rubbish. It's the Dinsmore's plastic one and I don't really know why. Oh, there you go, it opened that time. So we've got at least some bait in the water now. I'm going to do probably 10 of these before I do any fishing at all. Bait dropping done. So one, one of the things I absolutely love about fishing is that there is an art to pretty much everything. Anything you do, spinning, lure fishing, bait fishing, fly fishing, there's always an art, there's always a craft. I can see there's a craft here to using a bait dropper that I've not quite got yet. Uh, I saw people on the internet were using a separate rod sometimes for doing it. Now I don't want to do that, but I can definitely see now that uh, yeah, using a bait dropper is a real craft and something I'm going to have to get used to. So because I wasn't particularly accurate with the bait dropper, I've actually moved a couple of yards upstream just to make sure that I'm covering that bait area well. I mean, there is a nice line of flow here, sort of the reason why I'm fishing this. There's a few reasons actually. We've got a bit of oxygen above us, we've got a weir above us. Nice flow line here that gradually deepens off below us. Big back eddy that I think should be holding fish. I know they've been caught here before on flies, which is a real advantage. And I've seen them myself further down the pool. So I'm hoping with a bit of bait and a bit of smell in there, uh, we should be drawing fish up from there if they're not already here. I, I would love to catch a fish today, but I'm not going to put any mega pressure on it. If it happens, great. If not, then we'll keep trying until we get one. I'm just going to go through that rigging very quickly for what it's worth. So my real line is eight pound glide mono, which should float really well. I hope it does because I haven't really got many ways of keeping it floating if it doesn't. Down to a four gram uh, specimen Avon stick, one of the Corum ones. I, I like the idea of the four gram because it's going to be easy for me to cast. It's going to hold the meat up well. That's secured on with a couple of float rubbers. Down from there, I've got a four gram Olivette to a micro swivel. I like the Olivette rather than the shot. It just means you, you don't have to have loads of shot lying around. Just one Olivette on there, bang it on. And then I've got about 18 inches of six and a half pound fluorocarbon to a size four hook. And don't worry, I have pinched the barb down on that hook. They are barbless. First thing I'm going to do is just move that float a little bit. You would think it would be a real advantage having waded this river a lot, knowing the depths everywhere, but actually, because the area below me is very deep, I don't exactly know what depth there is. So we'll use the first couple of runs through here just to sort of figure it out. Cube of Robin Red on there. Okay, we'll give that a go. Right, clicker off. Try to keep the clicker to a minimum. It's just I'm going to need it uh, while I'm doing rigging and stuff. Otherwise, I'm just going to end up in a mess. Two pulls of line off of the reel here. I'm just going to try and give this a little flip almost completely across from me. Uh, that's wrapped around the rod tip. That's gone absolutely nowhere. And that is exactly the start we were all hoping for. Let's try that again. That didn't happen in the garden yesterday. And I was using a much lighter Olivet. So that is definitely a little bit of pre-match nerves there. That's better. So that's a way. It's going through all right. Don't think I'm holding it back too badly. Okay, something happened there. It definitely went under. There's no fish on the end. Doesn't need to be a long cast. Just flip that out next to me. I know I'm going to lose that meat at some point. I'm casting this way too hard. I think I'm doing okay here. It's going through all right. You just thought of batting away at this reel to try and keep it moving. Okay, I've just put some extra feed in this time of year. Water temperatures are high, these barb will be feeding pretty hard, so I think keeping some feed in is going to be important. And I'm just going to, just for the next few minutes, rather than talk too much, I'm just going to try and give myself a chance to get into a bit of a rhythm here. It's weird this actually, so when I'm urine infin or dry fly fishing, because it's my sort of my comfort zone, 
I feel like I can talk through it quite easily while I'm doing it, whereas this, I'm having to concentrate so hard that I'm actually finding it difficult to talk about what I'm doing while I'm doing it. The other thing, of course, is that what I'm doing, I'm completely making up on the spot, so it might be of absolutely no value at all. I could be doing this totally wrong. Don't think I am. Okay, so I've just given myself 20 minutes there just to sort of fish away and try and figure things out. As I say, I struggle to concentrate on both fishing and talking to start with. Um, I've not had a fish, not really had anything to strike out that I genuinely thought was a fish, but it has given me an opportunity just to sort of figure things out a bit, um, particularly with the centre pin. I have to say this is almost completely brand new to me. So obviously, I definitely wasn't expecting to catch something from the first swim. But even going through it at the time and then watching back through it again, I could sort of see and hear and feel myself learning more stuff about what to do here. I was starting to understand the reel. I was starting to understand the mending a bit better. I could read what the float was doing a little bit better. And after an hour in that first swim, actually my confidence was going up and up and up. Righty. First swing in a new spot. I know I've got a a similar problem to what I faced earlier actually with the depths. I know that where this is going to land, it's really not that deep and the depth really is below us as we get below these trees. So again, I've sort of got that Olivet at half depth. Oh, I don't like that wind. Got that Olivet at half depth. We'll just see if we can find where the river bed is. Oh, I don't think that was a fish. Something happened. I don't think it was a fish though. Definitely went solid. There are a lot of signal crayfish in here. I guess it's not impossible it was one of those. So it's the first time I've struck and felt any resistance. So yeah, depth. As I was saying, I know that below me, it's deeper than I've got this set at. I, I know that's stuck on the bottom there. I don't think that's a fish. No, it's definitely not a fish. Right, that's got over the first shelf, I think. Has it? Not quite. Oh, no, that's a fish. Oh. <laughs> oh, dearie me. Okay. That was a fish. Right. I've had a take. The problem is, it's a take that I was never going to see. I'm really sure to do it. Like, trying to fish in much deeper water than really I'm rigged up for. But if I rig up for the shallow water that I just had that take in, I can't fish the rest of the pool. Balance here somewhere, we just haven't quite figured it out. These are the challenges. These are the challenges that you get from fishing a new method for the first time. It's all good. I know there'll be lots of comments in the comment section telling me sort of what's going on here. But that was definitely a fish. It, I'm, I'm almost certain it was a fish. It felt like it was moving away. Why is it? Wherever you are in the countryside, if you get five minutes of peace and quiet, someone starts up a chainsaw or a strimmer. <laughs> Every time. Okay, I'm going to bite the bullet here and just try and move downstream a little bit, see if I can get sort of beyond this, whatever it is that the float keeps catching on just in front of me here. It's a bit of a gamble because it means walking onto an area that I think the fish should be sat on. Start that a little bit further across and down than previous ones, sort of manage it over this first bit. That should be as good now. This is the first time I've actually got through. That's a fish. That's a fish. I thought to start with it was the bottom and it's not. It is a fish. It doesn't feel like a very big fish. <laughs> what have I got here? Is this going to be a trout or something? Oh, a manky old stocky rainbow that's come down from a club upstream. So I'm not going to net it. I'm going to play it out trout season's over but what I can do here is just sort of practice playing fish on the kit. So this is the first fish I've actually had on a centre pin before. Stuff to learn here <laughs> even if it's not the target species. I've put the clicker on just to add a bit of resistance. It helps you guys to hear what's going on. It's not the fish we're after but it's the fish will take. <laughs> That'll do you. Come here. Looks just on the edge of his mouth, so I should be able to literally just shake this guy off. Off he goes. 
Okay, so we caught a fish. <laughs> um, I did say at the start of the day, a bite would be nice. We've had a bite, we've had a fish. It's completely the wrong species. I'll be honest, I'm still pretty chuffed with that. We've managed to catch a fish the first time trying this. Hey, it's a fish, we're on the way. So it may have been the wrong species, but I could tell I was learning all the time. Out of interest, how do people deal with that issue of the depth in a barbel swim when it goes from shallow to deep? Obviously, I want that luncheon meat to be on the bottom where the barbel are going to feed. But if my run starts at two foot deep and finishes at six feet deep, if I've got it set for six foot up here, it's just going to hit the bottom and drag and it's not going to move. Whereas if I have it set properly up here with that olivet kind of less than two feet, I'm just worried that by the time it gets down here, it's not going to have sunk properly. What is the right thing to do there? Because all the diagrams and all the books and all of that, everything I read just suggests that the idea is that the riverbed is a constant flat and that is definitely not the case on the Derbyshire Derwent. I only had time that day to go out and fish one more swim after that. I ran out of battery life. But I went home pretty satisfied that while I hadn't caught a barbel, I'd caught a fish. I sort of had a feel for the centre pin. A bait dropper in was getting a little bit better. It couldn't have got much worse than that first one. So actually, I went home pretty satisfied that even though I hadn't caught a fish that time, I felt like I knew enough that the next time I went out, I might have a slightly better chance. The second session was only a couple of days afterwards. And I'll be honest, when I arrived, I was a little bit worried because the valley was much colder, there was a slight crisp in the air, it wasn't warm, that's for sure. I could tell even the water temperature had dropped a little bit. As that water temperature drops, I think these fish are going to get harder to pick up in the shallower water on float fishing kits. So I was very, very concerned. But I knew what I had to do. I had to get that bait dropper back in a good piece of water, find some structure, find some depth. And who knows, at some point, if I'm really, really lucky, I might get a bite. It might even be from a barbel. Okie doke, so stepping in the water for day two of the barbel on float adventure uh, it was pointed out to uh, to me by someone in the youtube community tab thing that i put up that i've probably not chosen the best time of year to have a crack at this and uh, no you are absolutely right the Haddon estate that i'm fishing on is primarily a game fishing fishery and they don't let us fish bait until the end of the trout season so this is as early as i could get on here it's the venue i really want to do it on because it's sort of home if you get what i mean really really mean a lot if i could get one from here before anywhere else I've done a little bit of work before i stepped in i've put four five bait droppers full of bait in just got a little bit of bait down there and then let that settle for 15 minutes while i did most of the rigging uh, rigging is the same as it was for the previous session still got that four gram speci on still got the olivette on and we're just going to get a nice clean trot through this area here where this you've got this kind of fallen structure there's a bit of bit of tree and stuff here to, to drift this past it looks really fishy to me and while it's not an area that i've seen barbel before it just looks about right so when I was using the bait dropper, I sort of used it as a bit of a, a plummet to see if I can figure out what the depth was. I'll, I'll be honest with you, I thought I was about right. Already on that first attempted run through, I've hit the bottom pretty hard. So maybe that doesn't work quite as well as I'd hoped. I'm going to have to manage that float through quite carefully, I think, just to keep it moving. So I've put most of the bait in about two thirds of the way along this fallen tree. So we've got the tree and then we've got a lovely slack just behind it as well. Bit of a back eddy. Looks really fishy. That's gone. That's a fish. That's a fish. Jesus, that's the third cast of the day. That's a fish. What is it? Oh, wow. That's a fish and it's gone flying off. I'm surprised if this wasn't a barbel. That is absolutely screaming down to him. I can't believe it. That is literally a third run through today. I cannot believe this has happened in my heart. It's freaking pounding. Oof. This, this can't be happening. No way. Not within the first few minutes. It's taken me miles downstream. Turn the ratchet on so you guys can sort of hear what's happening. Gives me a little bit more resistance as well. I'm already checking where my nest is. There's no way this can be a barbel. Surely not. That float slid away beautifully. What have we got? Oh, powerful, whatever it is. Not seeing it yet. It's a barbel. I can see it. It's a barbel. No way. God, crikey, it's strong. Just gonna go towards the camera a little bit and just pick my net up. I know it's premature. Oh, I've had things organised. There's so much thought gone into this. 
I want to say so much time, but time on the water has been minimal. I've thought about this moment for the last three weeks non-stop. It's all I've talked about with my friends with IB is, can I catch a barbel on a float? <sighs> Come on. Oh, it's so strong. This is where that stepped up float rod really comes in handy. Oh, oh I got him up a little bit. Got him up a little bit. Can I get you in the net? Yes! Come on! Yes! It's in the net. I can't believe it. Oh my goodness. I've been here five minutes. Oh, it's an absolute beauty as well. I be. You have it. Hang on. Have you got it? Oh my it's god. It's a freaking barbel. It's an absolute beauty. It's an actual, I can't an believe barbel. it. It's like my third cast today. Okay. Uh, oh, it's probably well about done. five pounds. Five, yeah, about five pounds. I've literally just landed it. Are you shaking? I'm absolutely quivering like a leaf. I can't believe it. Good job. Oh, right. I've got to oh. ring Yang because he wants me to ring him if I got one in the okay. net. Okay. Bye. Lovely lots. Bye bye. Good job. Okay, so I've taken five minutes just to chill out there. The fish has been in the net the whole time. I know all about resting barbel. So you after a big fight like that. Guys, I can't believe this has just happened. And it's a belting fish as well. It's not left the water the whole time since I've landed it. I haven't needed to use the mat or anything. He's very fresh, so I imagine he'll be. A little bit of fuss when I lift him. Very tense, but look at that. What a barbel that is. My first one on the float. My first one from the Derwent. I'm absolutely over, over the moon. <laughs> look at it. It's so pretty. So powerful. Ah, oh, so perfect. Let's get him back. As I say, this fish is well rested, so I'm very, very confident in putting him back now. One last look, no, off he goes. <laughs> oh, well, I did say that swim over there looked fishy. I didn't think it was quite that fishy. I can't believe I've just done that in the first five minutes. I, I was honestly not expecting to catch anything today. I, I thought this was just gonna be another learning day, learning experience, you know, dot around, fish a few spots. I hadn't even got into fully explaining what the plan was today, to be honest. I just thought I'd have a couple of hours of learning. It was nice because I, I knew it was a bite. When the float went under, I knew that was a bite because we'd just gone through that process of, of changing the depth on the float a little bit. When that really sailed under, I was confident it was a fish. I just didn't expect it that early. I didn't expect it to be that species. All of the kit worked perfectly. Uh, I didn't completely mess it up on the center pin, though I came close a couple of times. It all worked. All the planning, all the thought, all the things I thought was going to have to do, it all worked. Uh, and this is one of those rare occasions where it actually all goes exactly how it's supposed to. If I don't catch another barbel today or this week or this month, it now doesn't matter. All the effort, all the expense, all the thought, it's all been worth it. We've got it on camera. My first ever barbel on a stick float, on a centre pin. Very, very satisfied, Andy. While I didn't get anything else from that swim, it really didn't matter. I left that swim feeling very content. I did want to try some different pieces of water though, so I pressed on and looked for some slightly different locations where I could learn a little bit more about how to use that sensor pin and float setup. Okay, so, so I've just taken 10, 15 minutes here to sort of trickle a couple of bits of lunch meat in every few minutes, and I've changed over to a completely, well, almost a completely different rig. Um, I've got a little Drennan crystal chubber float on that I actually found on this river about three years ago and promised myself at some point I was going to use. The swim here is much shallower and I think that big that big wire stem and that big bulky Avon float is probably a bit too much for this. Whereas this chubber is perhaps just a bit more subtle. That's the hope anyway. Hopefully that's about right. Uh, it's a little bit heavier than maybe the water needs. So 3.5 gram I think it is, 3.6 gram. I've got a 3 gram olivet underneath it, only about a foot. It's not particularly deep here. Uh, perhaps not a typical sort of barbel swim either. Although it is an area that I've, I've both seen and caught barbel from before previously, or I've had clients catch from previously. The river sort of splits around a series of islands here. And you've got this really nice feed line coming down this side that's right underneath all these trees. It's a completely different piece of water to anything I've fished so far. But as I say, I know they're here and it's one of the spots that I had in mind. Given that I've 
got one in the net already. I'm, I'm feeling a little bit chipper and a bit more willing to try some more stuff. And this is definitely something completely different. That's flown through and shown absolutely no signs of touching the bottom at all. So as soon as that's finished its run, which I think it's probably about done there, just at the bottom end of this, I'm going to wind this right the way back in and we'll just adjust that float a little bit. Really having to work hard with the sense pin on this one, keep dabbing at that spool to keep paying line off. It's much, much faster water than everything else I've fished so far. I must admit, I have to concentrate pretty hard on this one. I think I'm getting reasonable runs through. I think they're okay. But definitely, definitely working harder in this faster water. Crikey. I pretty much stuck with that loafer setup for the rest of the day. I was really enjoying the challenge of fishing that slightly faster water. It really requires a lot of effort and a lot of concentration to fish one of these effectively in really fast water, especially where you've got drops in depth, where you've got bottom that's uneven, so the float is ducking and weaving and you're having to read it and figure out what is and isn't a fish pretty quickly. I was having to work really, really hard, but I'm not going to lie, I was really enjoying having to pull that effort in. And while I won't say it felt like second nature, it was sort of back in my comfort zone a little bit of having to work hard to make things go through properly. Eventually, though, I was starting to run out of time, I was starting to run out of battery life, and most importantly, I was starting to run out of bait. So I decided to head back to one last spot, one of the pools that I'd actually fished on the first day. I approached it from a slightly different angle to see if I could get a slightly better drift and just see if there was one last bite in for me before I run out of bait. That's a fish. That is a fish. Oh my goodness, right at the end of the day. Oh, it's a bloody trout. Uh, I'm pretty sure I've seen that's a trout. Oh, just for a second then I thought barbel. That's a shame. I was thinking barbel then for a second. I thought with literally the last cast of the day pretty much I thought I was going to sneak one out. So it's a trout. Oh, well. It's a bite. I hit it. Oh, if I can get my net out of the bush I should be able to land it. I knew this was going to be a tough place to land fish because of this water licking around the side of the bridge. <laughs> if this was a barbel, it would be pulling my arm off, I reckon. This is doing a pretty good job of it. Oh, no, it's a chub. Is it? No, it's, no, it's not. It's a brownie. Oh, just for a second then. I thought it was a big chub. It is not. It's a brownie. Pretty sure it's one of the stockies from upstream again. <laughs> that would be pretty appropriate. Okay, let's get you back, buddy. Okay, not the fish we're after, but the fish we're going to finish on. Yeah, I know, once again, the wrong species. Clearly, I am an absolute trap magnet. I can't avoid them, even when I'm fishing giant pieces of luncheon meat. I'm not going to lie, though, I was very, very satisfied on that drive back home. I've been thinking about catching that barbel for the last two years. Ever since this thing turned up in the post and I first gave it a spin in my hands, I thought to myself, wow, it'd be amazing to feel the power of a barbel through one of these things because it offers you basically no help. It is you versus fish. There's no gearing. There's no bait runner. There's no clutch. You are one on one with that fish. And I absolutely loved it. I will say, I spend quite a lot of time during the trout season guiding up on the Haddon estate on these stretches of the Derwent and feel very familiar with the place. It was really interesting just to know how unfamiliar everything felt once I'd changed the situation, once I'd changed the kit, once I'd changed the sort of idea of what I was trying to achieve. It really put me outside of my comfort zone and I absolutely loved that. I really enjoyed it. It was really nice to be able to go back to a piece of water that I fish a lot and go, wow, I've got to really focus on this again. I've got to look at this differently. You can get pretty locked on to your thing, be it nymph fishing for grayling or dry fly fishing, or maybe you're a hardcore trotting geek or something like that. But there are so many different ways of going about this. And actually, as you go through them, you start to pick up bits from one in each other. And all of these different methods, I think, make you a better angler. 
So if you're out there and you've only been doing one thing the whole time, maybe do just branch out a little bit. Pick up something totally different. Just go and do something that takes you completely out of your comfort zone. Because not only is it really refreshing and really engaging, I actually think it makes you a better angler as well. Guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. I understand the format is slightly different. I wasn't really sure what to do with the footage that I had available. So let me know if it's worked or hasn't worked. Let me know if you've done something recently that's taken you out of your comfort zone or if you're going to in the future. Uh, let me know how to fish a stick float a little bit better because I could definitely do some help on that one. And uh, I, Ben, I will see you guys both in the comments section and on YouTube again very, very soon for some more fishing, some more luncheon meat, some more stick floats and some more centre pin very, very soon. Take care, folks. Bye-bye.